Okay, so we begin the tutorial today, which I believe is tutorial five. And finally, we're going to get into some interesting things. I know we've been kind of going over some of the easier examples with basic, you know, from learning how the prints, go to's work, loops, for next loops, random variable, you know, random numbers, and just different stuff like that. Now we're actually going to get into some sound, which one of the really things I liked about the common, I'm just commoner. One of the things I really liked about the Atari home computer ever since I first owned one is how easy it is to get sound going on this system and understand, you know, take a, and comprehend how it works. So let's get started on that. So I'm on Chapter 7 in the <clears throat> XE System Owner's Manual. So it's easy as just typing the word sound. And in the first number, you're going to type, this is the voice that goes from 0 to 3. The next number, and keep in mind these numbers um, are essential for understanding, you know, how to, to do stuff with it. So that one goes to 0 to 3. The next one goes from 0 to 255, which is called the pitch. In this example, they have 50. The next one is called the distortion. It's kind of like the background noise. And that one goes from 0 to 14. And then finally, there's the volume that goes from 0 to 15. So it's as simple as just typing in like that, and here we go. And now you got some kind of a spaceship sound. A fire, could be anything really. And then, when you want to turn it off, you just follow it by the voice that you started, and just set everything to zeros. And just like that, you got the sound off. So they wanted to demonstrate some other examples here. This time we're going to change the distortion. And you see as soon as you change the distortion, it's kind of changed how it sounds entirely. for sound. Um, now here's a four-part har harmony, as they mentioned here. So we'll do them one by one. Obviously got that one. The next voice. The next voice. And the final voice. Kind of cool. And you can type in. And it actually kills it. That's kind of cool. <laughs> So it apparently resets the sound registers. Okay, so now we're finally getting to get into some programs here. We know about variables. the variables with where each goes. I have no idea why they should go to 20, but let's see. Okay. So I guess we could continue on to the next stuff. cycle through the sounds. We also need to, yeah, I think we're good there. We'll hear it. That's kind of cool. You can also do some randomization, as we learned already, with the volume.
starting to sit much longer at that time too. Okay, and then finally there's a song example in the book here. So we'll basically erase this and start over. For those who don't know, those are musical, excuse me, those are musical chords. You have C chord, D chord, E chord, F chord. A famous clear screen. something new just called reading data statement so I'm kind of glad they went into this example I'll make sure to explain it before we start that here once I finish the program there's another new one go so If you're following, I'm trying to keep track of like when we learn new stuff, as much as I can recall. You saw the notes example at the top there so you can tell which notes are being played by looking at the um, other line that was um, line 30. So in this example, 121 is C, that's C, C chord, then we got D chord, 96 is E. Now is E major. Uh, 91 is F chord. 108 is D chord. And of course 121 is C chord. So we'll say this. This cut song, I guess. Oh, actually there's more to it. Just realize there's more in the next page, so let's take a look here. Save some time here. So remember, you can use the tab to kind of move through it real quickly. And arrow keys, of course, to position. Okay, use the program. You can see the new lines. Another new one, return. But before we run it, let's go over and explain the new stuff. So the new lines will be starting at line 70. Read pitch. Let's go there. So what this is doing is it's reading from what's called a data statement, which we can't see on the screen. So I'm going to go down and list the rest of it so you can see it. Even though that'll go off the screen. Oh no, it stays on here. Okay. Well, wait. There's our data statement. Sorry. So 
data stream. So it's going to read these one by one. Every time we read pitch, it's going to read the first one in, 121, then it's going to read 121, 108, 96, 96, and so on. So each time this value in pitch, think of it as a counter. It's incrementing through these. Why? Because up here, we're incrementing through a loop, which goes from 1 to 8. And if you look here, it's basically going to pass this into... Um, Oh wait, where did I put the note? I probably didn't do this right. Let me see. I modified the other program. I'm trying to see what they did here. Read pitch. Well, it's reading into pitch. That's all it's doing. It's just reading one to eight values, and each time it's hitting pitch, it's going to be changing what's in the sound here. We heard that do, so you're going to get some kind of a, a musical sound. And of course, this 200. Remember, go to goes to a line. What 200 does is very similar. It's going to go to line 200 here. And it's going to start looking through the pitch. Remember, we're reading this data statement right here each time. So each time we're going through this for loop, or this condition, it's figuring out what is in this data statement. So the first time there's a 121, then it's going to print the word pitches on the screen. It's going to have the, the variable of, um, well, I'm sorry, the, the string variable of C chord on it. And it's going to do this each time. So when it gets to the 108, it's going to do the D and so on. So you just see how it's going through all these numbers here to figure out what to the print. And of course, once it goes to this line 200, once it hits this return here, what it does is it goes back up here to this line to start over again. So each time here, it's going to allow it to keep reading new values as it goes through the program. So kind of a way to trap it inside of a little loop and bring it back each time. So let's save the new changes here. Finally, we get to run it. I think I explained everything. Let me see. Yeah, I think that's it. I have no idea what that song is, but that's kind of cool. You could end up making your own song, your own music, once you understand how musical notes work. And it's got a little bit of a delay in there, too. I didn't mention that here, but there's a delay right here where it says for pause equals 1 to 500. If you wanted to play faster, just change your delay. And, of course, it's going to go through a little bit faster. Depending on, you know, what, what the, um, the pitch, not the pitch, I'm sorry, what the timing is in, in your songs and everything. Okay, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Pretty much that's all they have for sound. Um, you can go and you can change any of these values to kind of mix up your own sound. So do, do. If you know anything about music, you want to stay in the chord or whatever the chord this one is, which I think is probably in C. Let me see. 121 is, well, we got the notes up there at the top of the screen. Let's go back to them again. Um, was it 30? Yeah, 30. So let me just look at 30 here. So 30. So it goes C, C, D. The 96 is E, E, yeah, so I think it's in the C chord. You can go and you can mix these up. Just don't throw in some random notes. You want to put something in that sounds a little bit different. You could also extend it, make it a little bit longer. Instead of ending there, maybe we could just start it off as another pitch. Maybe we could start it off on the E chord or something like that. It's like 96. Um, I don't have any song in my mind of how I would do it, but so it would be something like, if I'm playing the E, then we might go to like the C next or something. 121. Might play that. Maybe. Let's try it three times to see what that sounds like. And then after the C chord, D is another pretty common one that you'll move into. Do that twice. Just something like that will allow the pitch to keep going. And really wouldn't want to end on an F chord, but you could probably have started that one on F chord. I think that's good right there. So what we do is we got new lines here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new lines. So we just go up here and we add in our new lines. You can just say eight plus seven. That should do it. Right there. And that should allow us to hear the new music. I guess we can make it sound like it ends on, on the first chord. You always want to bring it back to the original note, too. I think that is pretty good for making it sound right. 
So it sounds like it's going to actually end. There you go. That is kind of cool. You can save the new additions there. Got one more thing I want to do with this. I'm surprised I didn't do it. We learned it earlier, but basically in this line here, here, we can add like a, a second voice in here. Say like 82, sound, voice plus one, and then have a pitch, of course, tone, volume. Maybe add a second or another one. Voice plus, plus two. You could also make it bring in pitches and, and volumes after you've done like a chorus or something like that. That would be kind of cool too. And the way you would do that, um, here I'm just going to kind of add my own style to it, is wait till it reaches and it clears the first round of the first data. What I, what I wish I could do in the kind of tricks like this is do something like this. I've seen this trick in Atari where you hit like a negative one and that will allow it to switch over to our new voice. We could um, do the same thing here if we added more additional lines. So I think I'll just take out line 83 and we'll go back here. So to get the second voice, we're going to wait until it reads a certain sound before we switch the voice out. So remember, the pitch is the voice. It's picking up each sound. So pitch is less than one, like that, less than one. Then we're going to hit in the sound there, the new sound. So it's going to wait till it finishes the first chorus, hit this value, which is less than one, and pick up the next chorus for the next sound. That should work. Oh, oh I ended. What did I do wrong? Um, pitch is less than one. I see what I did wrong here. So negative one. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it never got to pitch for some reason. Uh, probably because it didn't read in enough values. Um, got the negative one and it ended. I know this needs another value in it too. So read the voice. Once it hits the pitch, less than one, it should pick up our second voice. I don't know why I did it. Let's put it in our other voice just to make sure here. Oh, I think I know why, because pitch can't be less than one. We could have just made it say less than two or something like that. So that way. Or less less than yeah less than one's good so that'll be zero and just make this a zero instead since it's not gonna really matter it might have threw an error or something and it trapped it so we never saw the error because if you go sound zero comma negative one like this I'll show you negative one comma ten comma eight it's gonna give you an error but that trap we had in the line prevented the error from showing so I think that was it picked up the rest, but for some reason it didn't hear that extra pitch come in. Mm. It's almost like you can't hear if it's putting in the second volume or not. Maybe we have to change the volume a little bit each time. That yeah, was always a trick on the target if you like change the volume. So we got an 8 here, we could set maybe this a 10, maybe 12 or something like that. Let's just play with it a little bit. Well, obviously it dropped the volume there. So we know it's hitting it because I heard the sound change. Not sure why it's not getting it. Have to kill the first one, so I wonder.
Is it shutting off the sound too? That might be why. Oh, because it's pausing it right here. So this is um, killing the sound right here each time. So I probably just need to remark this out. It's going to sound really weird now with, without... You're, not, you're going to hear that... It's going to be longer. So that allows the sound to end when you do that. So... We also don't have the other sounds turning off here. Guess it's really hard to hear because it's shutting the sound off each time. But I think you get the idea. And we could also do something else here. We learned about this one before, but I'll throw this in here anyway. So line 85, change the sound, change the screen based on the chord, the color of the screen. Actually, let me show you this one. Let's do the border. See, it kind of changes the border color for you there. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one, but... I guess it's time to move on to the next one. There's some really cool stuff coming here next. We studied this not too long ago, but we'll, we'll erase this. And the next thing we're going to be learning is something similar to what we've done doing with the poke. It's changing the color of the screen based on the luminance. It's called set color. And I was trying to see if it had the instructions here for set color. So the first one is supposed to be, it says the first one is not used, let me see. Light blue, dark brown, I'm just kind of looking at an example in this book. It doesn't really explain set color very well here. Just, let me see. Oh, there it is. It, I see it now. Okay, so it says 16 basic colors and the corresponding number of values are shown below. It's called the hue. The remaining 112 colors added by value for luminance. So one's supposed to be the luminance or brightness. I think the last one is the brightness. Oh no, that's that color. So this one is, we know the background color. This one's probably the brightness, let me see. Oh no, that's the screen color. Maybe the first one is the brightness. No, that can't be more. That's going to change. It allows you to create different hues, basically. But I never really cared for set color. I've always used the pokes, but they don't really go into a lot in this book. So, oh, there's an example in here. I guess I could type that one in. Step through two each time, do the luminance. Print some values on the screen like we learned about with variables.
float it down so we can see it. Going to show you the different shades of this color. So that one apparently does the luminance, which is the last one. You can see where they're in line 60 where it's picking them up, and the other one is going to be the color in front of it. So a good way to get it to cycle through colors appropriately. This might take a while. I'm going to leave it there. But you can kind of see it's just cycling through the colors. And that's eight. Okay. So I wanted to kind of quickly move ahead of this one. You can always peek in here and see what the screen color is. Okay, so now, how long is this video? 27 minutes. Uh, let's see how much is left here. Hate to make these videos long, but there's some really cool stuff coming, which is essentially the graphics. Program's on too long. I guess I could go into this a little bit. This might require more of an explanation. But I think I'm going to stop this one for now because I don't want to make these all kind of mixed up with sound, graphics, and all that. This one was all about, mostly about sound. There was a little bit of luminous, and I think I got, it went into graphics, and I kind of went overboard. But anyways, we'll save the next one for graphics and move on. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. This is Steve Morrow signing off.